Hi, this is Heidi filling in for Pastor Paul. I have uh, sad news this morning. I want to go over some of the mass animal deaths that have continued for the month of December. You don't hear about it anymore, do you? Nobody wants to talk about it. But some websites have um, maintained the mass animal deaths list. And um, one of those was sent to me. And um, I've checked out some of the links. And I want to share some of that with you. Let's start out by reading Hosea 4. Because we know where that is. That's where this all started, right? Hosea 4. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Because there is no truth no mercy nor knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood toucheth blood. Therefore shall the land mourn and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beast of the field and with the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Very, very sad. So let's share some of these um events that have happened just since December 1st. December 2nd, there's thousands of dead fish found suddenly. Suddenly is in the Bible, isn't it? Suddenly. Thousands of fish cages owned by farmers in the Kidang Ambo village. It's in, it's in Indonesia. Again died suddenly. And this is the second time that they've had a suddenly death swarm in Indonesia. Early in September 2014, it had occurred sudden fish death, and it's not certain because the fish was dead, but provisional estimates due to the lack of oxygen. Remember what we read um, Sunday, what, what night was that that we read that about, um, maybe it was Thursday night, about Revelation 16, where it talks about the spirit being removed and that the spirit actually translated to oxygen. Um, the village heads revealed that dozens of tons of fish belonging to farmers in, in the village hamlet died suddenly that most types were tilapia and tumbro. While catfish can still survive, as a result of these events, it's estimated that tens of fish farmers lose hundreds of millions of dollars. My neighbor who had cages in WKO already told me but so far there has been no detailed reports. I also have not had time to check the field, says uh, somebody that they were interviewing there. They said that the waters were fetid waters before the fish had died. The, con the conditions of the waters had changed. And he said the fish farmers spread in several hamlets. Um, but however, the number of fish farmers um, there in, in all of the hamlets had all suffered from the loss of these fish. While the head of the Department of Animal Husbandry and Fisheries claimed to have received a report related to the death of fish, he claims to have issued a circular to the fish farmers to immediately harvest of large fish. August explained death of fish in the WKO events regularly occur in August and December. The cause is suspected because of the lack of availability of oxygen in the waters. It's because of the very cold temperature changes. Usually these fish die at midnight. There we go again. Why do the fish die at midnight? And again, it's from a lack of oxygen in the water. All right. Then we go to mass fish deaths in North QLD, Sparker Probe. Okay. And that's Australia. This happened on December 2nd as well. Residents have been warned to avoid a creek near Carn School while health authorities probe the discovery of hundreds of dead fish. The director of Tropical Public Health Services, Dr. Richard Garr, says reports uh, of children are jumping into the Saltwater Creek near Edge Hill State School to catch the dead or dying fish, and that is concerning. Until we know what, they're, what we are dealing with, it is important that people exercise caution, and my advice is to avoid contact with Saltwater Creek and fish in the Saltwater Creek. He says no one should remove or consume the fish. The discovery of the fish floating in the creek at the, at the weekend sparked an investigation by the Department of Environment and Heritage Protection. A local farmer, Andrew Harrington, said the fish deaths may be caused by vehicle runoff. And the, he's saying because that there was a bunch of rains lately that they feel like the rubber compounds from the tires on the road caused the fish to die. 
Well, it rains a lot of times and there's not fish die-offs. So that, to me, isn't really a very good explanation. So anyways, people, people will search for any explanation extent, instead of Hosea 4, won't they? So then I have this other report about these uh, mussels that have washed up on a South African beach. And this happened on December the 4th. Hundreds of thousands of mussels, hundreds of thousands of mussels wash ashore on the South African beach. Experts are not completely sure why, but warn the people do not eat them. Some fear that the toxic red tie of algae may have caused the phenomenon, but officials say strong currents may have washed the mussels off a reef. Again, anything but the Hosea prophecy. Hundreds of thousands of mussels have washed ashore on a beach, prompting officials to warn people not to eat them. And you should see these mus this pictures of these mussels on this beach. A stretch of Roberg Beach on the southern coast of South Africa has been transformed into a mussel beach as thousands of the black mollusks cover the sands. As experts try to work out what caused the mussels to be washed up, people are warned to play it safe and not eat them. Some believe that the toxic red tie, a harmful bloom of algae, may have played a role in the mussels being washed up along a 325-yard section of the beach, but this has been dismissed by experts. Conservationist Dr. Mark Brown from Nature's Valley Trust told the Port Elizabeth Herald, it does not appear to be linked to the red tie or anything sinister at this stage. South African National Park's marine ecologist Kyle Smith warned the public to resist eating the delicacy. Most of the mussels were still alive when they washed up, which lowers the possibility that it's related to some form of toxin from either a red algae bloom or another source. As a precautionary measure, I would advise the public not to eat them. The expert's warning has not stopped the seagulls from taking advantage of the unexpected feast with flocks of birds uh, getting their fill of the mussels. So nobody knows why hundreds of thousands of mussels have washed up on these shores. Nobody knows. All right. And then closer to home in Massachusetts, we have a problem with Cape Cod turtles. Death, Cape Cod turtle deaths confound the researchers. A mystery is unfolding on the beaches of Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Hundreds of endangered sea turtles have been washing up on the shore, sick and stunned by the cold ocean water. Biologists and volunteers are mounting an unprecedented rescue response to save as many turtles as possible before it's too late. Now, this happened on December 5th. Most of the turtles are juvenile Kemp's Ridleys, measuring less than a foot long. They're being trapped on their southbound fall migration to warmer climes by the arm of the Cape, which protrudes into the Atlantic Ocean. Many wash up not only incapacitated by the cold, but also with life-threatening conditions like dehydration, pneumonia, infections, or off-kilter blood chemistry. Their skin is often discolored, and early on, many were overgrown with algae. Hmm, why are they so sick and why are they running into all this trouble? They're terrible looking when they first wash up, says Bob Prescott, the director of the conservation group Mass Audubon's Wellfleet Bay Wildlife Sanctuary in South Wellfleet, Massachusetts, who is coordinating the recovery of stranded turtles from the beaches. Fortunately, they respond well to treatment. His crews of volunteers and staff members have picked up more than 1,070 turtles so far, about 20% of them already dead. That's far above the average of 200 turtles that have washed up each fall for the past decade. So the usual thing is that 200 turtles will get caught up on this landmass that juts out into the ocean while these turtles are on migration. But this year, that's five times the amount of turtles that are being washed up, and they're very, very sick turtles and covered with algae, a lot of them. The number of arrivals has declined, Prescott says, but it's still higher than normal, and I won't likely reach zero until the end of the year when the annual cold stun season comes to a close. With water temperatures dropping, more of the turtles are showing up dead, and bigger species that can withstand the cold longer, like loggerheads, are starting to wash up. 
Prescott's team sends the living turtles, often packed in banana boxes, to a sea turtle hospital in Quincy, Massachusetts, run by the New England Aquarium. 650 turtles have been admitted so far, approaching triple the hospital's previous record of 240 set in 2012. Workers at the hospital have been putting in 12 to 14 hour days with extra volunteers and staff from out-of-state aquariums pitching in, says Charles Ennis, the aquarium's director of animal health who oversees the sea turtles' care. Ennis's team has been stabilizing the turtles and then shipping as many as possible to other animal hospitals for further treatment and eventual release. This morning, a private plane flew 50 of the turtles to Houston. Last week, the U.S. Coast Guard airlifted 193 to Florida. Ennis says the Cape Cod turtles have filled just about every facility along the U.S. East Coast and aquarium. Staff members are now trying to place them in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Texas. We just simply don't have the tank space available to handle 600 turtles there. And nobody does, really. It's really a national effort at this point. The healthiest turtles typically require a month or two of care before they can be released. Okay, so it goes on and on and on and talks about. It says another hypothesis that is rapidly warming water in the Gulf of Maine, which includes Cape Cod Bay and waters north to Nova Scotia, could be luring the turtles farther north than they once ventured, causing more to become trapped on their southbound journey when the water cools in the fall. But biologists are putting serious investigation into the causes of the record standings on hold until January after the rush to save turtles ends. Why don't they look at Hosea? Why just dismiss it? I know scientists have to have the proof in the pudding. They have to follow scientific methods. They have to um, have proof, solid proof. But they always start with a theorem. Scientists start with a theorem. What's wrong with the Hosea prophecy starting as your theorem, as your starting point of your theorem? If you look into it and you look at your proof, scientists, you will see that a lot of the pieces fit. Why not? Why not start it as a theorem? Hosea 4. Take a look. You'll be surprised what you might see.